Hey guys, welcome to the shop and back to this guitar that we call the Prep. It was a super tone uh, made by Harmony in the spring of 1940. That stamp is inside of this thing. Um, and it was owned by, Harmony was owned by Sears then. Um, and it would be pretty much the last year that Sears owned Harmony because the shop unionized and then the next thing you know they sold it off so that's its own story and maybe I'll tell it someday but this guitar was made in the spring of 1940 and you saw us steam the neck off in a, a series of episodes about how to steam off the neck of an Econo guitar so you can reset it and there's a playlist up there with all those episodes. Um, the whole idea here is to try and figure out is your guitar worth a neck reset and if it is what tools you need can you build them yourself and and how do you get a neck off without ruining everything. Now the thing about this guitar is let me get the neck out of the way. Um, this guitar had a very where the, where the neck attached to the body, um, the fingerboard was only about that thick. And so the neck was pitched back. When I got this guitar, it had a roller bridge on it right here. And the strings are up this high. So when I put this back together, I'm going to tilt the neck way down. And there's some filing and cutting we're going to do here to get that angle right. But the neck is going to pitch up on this thing pretty substantially. And... Doing that will put a great deal of pressure right here. So this thing is split. It's got splits. And the two things that I'm most concerned with is, I'll, I'll show it right here, but there's a bulge in the body right there. You can see they're separated right there. And there's one on the bottom by this tape right here. The body bulges right there. Do you see it? Now, what that comes from is this thing sitting and drying out somewhere forever. And I've put some sponges and stuff inside of it and hydrated it. And I've seen this part come up a little bit here because the neck was kind of pitching down. And the body was collapsing on itself between two tone bars. This is kind of like the same design that the K1 or we did um, the East L.A. Cutaway album uh, or, or uh, episode up there. And then we did one for Troy Mura we called the restaurant junk pile and it, it had the same configuration of tone bars instead of braces so you get these bars that run down the body start off up here by the neck and end up down here by the tail block the problem is is that these bulges start on both sides where the tail block is meaning the body has started to uh, twist one way or shift torsionally and so um, I got to fix that and in order to fix that if I push something in here something's got to give and that's going to be the top and bottom of the guitar and there's going to be some cracks and trying to seal up those cracks or hydrate the cracks uh, closed and, and then trying to splice them or whatever is not going to work I'm going to end up with something that's equivalent to the gap that's created by the bulge and so we are actually going to put a clamp on this body and we're going to clamp it down we're going to crack it on purpose and let nature do what it's going to do and now we're going to turn around and use a kind of wood called dicornia dicornia it is new guinean teak this comes out of new guinea and it's well it's got substantial properties of teak. It's durable, it's rough um, and tough, and it will not shrink and all kinds of things. Uh, because we're going to turn this, this guitar here into a junk pile. It's going to have a screaming pickup. It's going to be virtually useless to a collector, but it's going to be a screamer in some dive bar somewhere, and someone will want it. Trust me, that's what I'm known for. So we're going to get to the bench, and I'm going to show you kind of what's going on here. This is not going to be pretty. I'm going to crank stuff down and purposely crack things and try to control what happens. 
and now we're going to fill these cracks in a way that you're always going to be able to tell exactly what happened. There will be no question, and at the end of it, we'll follow this through and put it in somebody's hands that can play it and make it scream, and that's what I'm here for. So, sorry for the long-winded explanation, but that's what you get when you watch my channel. I teach you patience, and with that, Give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and let's hit the bench. You can see that there is a bulge right here. The body is sticking out here, and it's doing the same thing over here. So if you draw a line here, what's happening is this is twisted actually this way. The tail block is right here where you pin on the tail piece and the strap button. So this is cutting loose, and you can tell right where the block ends because the guitar is starting to crack right there. You have the same thing happening here. Now, over the years, this has dried out to the point where it's not reversible by hydrating the guitar. Now, I'm moving around here a little bit because I didn't put everything in the picture. But what we're going to do when we put the neck back on this guitar is we're going to make a cut right here just ever so slightly and that will cause the neck when it's on the guitar to pivot like this it'll raise the action up and it will put the bridge higher right up here so we'll get better action will compensate for the uh, the part up here on the neck let's zoom back out the other zoom out up here that is sunk down up in this area and it will give us the ability to get a higher floating bridge here. That's gonna put more stress here. Now, something else I wanna point out to you that's evident where this crack is forming is this has the tone bars that run down this way. There's bracing along the bottom of the guitar, but the soundboard or the top has tone bars here. So we wanna make sure that everything is solid. Now, there's a couple other cracks. There's a couple here. Um, and one up here that we're going to fix with cleats first but we're going to have to push this in and when we do that and glue it it's going to crack this open so much in fact that we're going to need to fill it with a splint and that's what this is all about so let's sh I want to show you what I have set up here to do the work we have the cleats we cut. I've rounded the edges off and remember the grain is going this way so if I were to glue this on the guitar up there the crack is running this way and if I were to put the cleat on this way and it opened it would it was split because the grain is there so we're going across the grain the grain is perpendicular but we have a little bottle of those cleats we cut I have hide glue um, I have my hide glue heater and I have my little flux brush these are cool because they have a metal handle um, there's a little bit of water that's heating up with the hide glue, and that's good for cleaning this out. We also have a splint that we cut out of the wood. Um, we have a scalpel, where are we at? We have a straight edge. We have some nice chisels. And of course, we also have some not nice chisels. These chisels try to bully these chisels just to get these chisels to do what they want, which is never the right thing. And then over here, we have the love pencil that's going to come in handy for putting cleats inside the body. And then we have what's elsewhere called museum wax, but in California, it's called earthquake wax. There we go, yeah. If you live in California, you know why. Anyway, we are going to clamp this body. We're going to pull this in. This is going to subsequently crack this and one on the bottom. And then we're going to fill those. So let's get to it. All right, let's get started. Now, as I said, when I push this in, to get this uh, back to the edge of this, because this is not going to change. But as soon as I push this back in, this is going to want to split because it's tied in here and here at the tail block. So I can expect it to crack. I can tell you where it's going to crack. It's going to crack right there. And I really don't want it cracking up to the point of that F hole. So I'm going to take my cleat. I am going to put 
some of my hide glue. Now look at the consistency of this hide glue here. It's nice and hot. And I'm going to put it on the cleat like so. I get plenty of it on there. And then I'm going to take this and put it inside the F hole. And we're just going to hold it there till it sticks a little bit. I'm going to want to stop the crack from running right there. And the only way to do that is with the cleat. Okay, now this is the point where you need a couple more fingers. But I have that splint right there. And I have it clamped right up there where I want the crack to stop. Now we're going to let that dry up a little bit. And while we're doing that, we're going to get this big clamp here ready. Long clamp. And I'm going to come up here. Let, let me make sure that we can see what's going on here. I may have to zoom out just a little bit. Oh, other zoom out. There we go. Now, the head block is up here. This is solid up here. So I'm going to take and clamp this across here like this. And I'm going to go to the spot where I want this to pull in. And I'm going to clamp there and I'm going to slowly get to the top of the that there like so and you can see already that this is starting to pressure right there you can see that crack where's chick flick teal pointer stay with me dude but right there so the more that I push this in the more this is going to want to split open right there. Something's got to give. So once I get this in place, I'm going to have to glue the soundboard or the top of the guitar to right here. And so I'm going to take a couple of palette knives and pop this up a little bit. But first thing is we need to make sure that that cleat is going to be in place and dried thoroughly so when this cracks open, it will stop there. I certainly don't want it running past this and into the F holes. Now, while this is happening over in this area right here, I've got a crack right there. I've got a crack right there. So I'm going to take some low tack tape off this awesome tape dispenser here. And I am going to tape those off like so. And we're going to get the suction cup out and push high glue into that. We don't want to hurry this because once that cracks open all the way up here, there's no fixing that. Remember, this part is going to be really integral. The bridge is going to sit right there. You're going to be really integral to this thing holding up, especially when somebody starts playing trash blues on it and beating on it. So there we go. All right, so I've told you before, when you're, when you're fixing these cracks, you want a suction cup. You want to get some moisture on it. I need to share where that came from. Use your imagination. But anyway, my hide glue is hot. I'm going to paint it on here like this. And then... I'm going to take the suction cup and I'm going to push it in by running it. I don't want to stop and pull up and, and pick up and down because if you are pushing it in with suction, every time you lift it, it'll pull it out. So you're just going to go along like this and push it down in there. And then what we'll do is since they're near the F holes, I'm going to put reach my fingers in there because they're easy to get to and put a cleat underneath this one and underneath this one so those stop. We don't want those cracking open in the future. This is, guitar is going to have more wood in it than a forest, but oh well, we want it to hang in there, right? Okay, so after a little bit of work with a little clamp or two and some binding tape, I've got these cracks pulled together and this one 
is this we're now we're waiting for cleats to dry before we pull this in anymore okay now we're going to take our hot plate and our iron and we're going to heat up the pallet knife like so that just holds that there i've got room for a couple more because we're going to separate the body right here and that'll be done by cutting loose the hide glue that's holding this together especially right here so we're going to pull it back to here uh, and open it up just a tad more here and then that way we can crank the body down and we can get our hide glue in there and when we seal all this up it'll all come together and we'll re-glue this and make sure that everything is clamped and works out okay so let's heat up the palette knife and separate this body to about back here okay so as these knives heat up put one in the crack right here and that gives us the ability to pop this one up a little bit and I've got this bigger one right here you have to be really really patient with this and get them underneath there and just keep them warm all right there we go things are cooled down a little bit we've got a couple little pieces of wood here that we can pop in to act as wedges while we put some hide glue in here and squeeze that in and suction cup it in like so it's going to be better if we stand it up on end but yeah we're just going to put plenty of hide glue there have it catch the edge and suction cup it in. All right, I feel like an orthopedic surgeon. Um, we've got the top bow pulled in. We've got the uh, soundboard or top of the guitar um, glued down to that. We've got cleats running across this area here. We've got cleats running across the sound or the F hole cracks here alongside the F holes. And then we've got a crack cut out on the bottom and we've got cleats glued into that from down inside. And these are clamped here, keeping the big crack on the bottom level where the cleats will dry up wow i'm glad this is going to be a junk pile because it is a mess all right everything is dried and we're going to start pulling clamps now and taking a look at what kind of damage we have left to deal with Something had to give when a body warps on a guitar that's 82 years old It's certainly not going to be a newborn when we're done. That's for sure. I can attest to that so Pull this big clamp off of here. Okay. Good news is that the bow Didn't pop back out so mission accomplished to one extreme or another. And all the cleats stayed in place. There we go. That one didn't come off. That one didn't come off, but I can see an obvious issue right here. Get that in the wood burning in there. Look right there. We've got an offset. You see that? We're going to have to fix that. Let's have a look at what the bottom looked like. We have a big crack to deal with down here, and I wanted the edges to be as the 
top surfaces of this crack to be as level as possible. This is where the splint will go. Now it's time for some tricks. Okay, let's have a closer look. There is a gap right there and it cracked all the way up to where we put the cleat right in here. Now, I am going to put a piece of patch over here that will be, well, apropos to one of my junk pile guitars. Uh, but in order to do that, I'm going to need something to screw that patch to. Um, and the first thing I need to do is to try to level this out as much as possible. So I can take my palette knife and see here where I need to take this little scalpel and get rid of the wood that's kind of hanging this up right here. You see that? Just nice and easy. And I'm glad that I glued that cleat right there. But I'm needing another cleat right here to pull this up into place. And you can see that when I put the palette knife in here, if I bridge this a little bit, it will line up. So I need to pull a cleat in from the bottom and glue it. Now, how am I going to do that? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is push a piece of dental floss down through the crack and get enough of it in there where we can hook onto it with this coat hanger. Like so. Now, we're going to want to figure out where we want the cleat to stay. We don't want the string sliding up all over the place. So, I want the cleat about right there. Like so. Now, I have to worry about getting volume and tone controls on here, so I'm going to think about that. But I want that cleat to be right here. Now I'm going to take the end of the dental floss and I am going to attach a guitar string to it. Like this. Do you see it? There's the end of it. To be completely and utterly dismayed. I have tied the dental floss to the end of the guitar string. See the keeper there? And I have drilled a hole in a cleat that is small enough not to let the end of the guitar string go through. Do you see that? Now I'm going to feed this stuff down through the crack. Okay, check it out. There's my guitar string and there's my cleat. You see that? Now you're asking me, why did you put this piece of dental floss? Well, because once we're done gluing all this, I will be able to pull the guitar string out using the dental floss through the F hole. Now the tricky part. I'm going to take a rag because I sure would hate to mess up the top of this beautiful guitar. And I've got my hide glue over here that's been heating up and my resin brush. And I'm going to take and put hide glue on the top of the cleat right here, like so. And I am going to carefully fish that up to the crack like so. And I'm going to sit here all day and I am going to wait for it to dry. Right? No. Wrong. Check me out. I have this little string winch. See that? Check that out. I'm going to put the gap on the string winch right over the crack. And then I am going to tighten this up just a little bit until both sides of the crack line up with each other. 
and we are going to let that dry. Once it dries, we're going to cut this loose, and then we're going to pull the end of our dental floss and pull the string out. Voila, you are very welcome. Now, while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to use this opportunity. We've already got a cleat right here. This is what stopped us from cracking. So I'm going to use this opportunity where I can reach through the F hole right here and glue in another cleat right there. Okay, now while we're waiting for the soundboard or the top side to dry, you'll notice that here we've put some cleats in already and part of the clamping process was to get these to be level. Um, we have cut a piece of wood and now we're working it to bevel it down so it will fit down in there and work as a splice and then we'll cut it off level and I'm going to patch all of this stuff up with a piece of metal and use our chick flick teal screws to keep everything in place and stabilize this but the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to um, work some hide glue into the body crack right here by popping that open and putting a copious amount of hide glue there. You can see the kerfing. The kerfing on this guitar is pretty shallow. They didn't do a lot there as well as the, the tail block and head block weren't what I thought they would be. But again, this is an economy guitar. We're just going to put our hide glue in here, like so, wherever it needs to go. Stuff's sticky, isn't it? There we go. And now we'll clamp this, pull this in, and we'll figure, we'll see if this is going to split anymore, but I, I think we've pretty much got it. All right, we are putting our last set of clamps on here on the top and get this one close to the edge like so and pop that up. I kind of wanted to point out here that sometimes when you're clamping on a rounded surface you're going to put two other clamps up here to keep this clamp within boundary so it doesn't slip off and you're tightening up everything up. Same thing was here. So these are ones are in addition to holding uh, the top down now that it's glued. It also, these two serve as to keep this one in boundary so things don't slip. This can be very frustrating. Again, patience is a virtue. Now we wait for stuff to dry and then we'll figure out how to cover up this big split right here. So we've got this piece of dicarinia and we have tapered the end down to fit here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to slide it into this split to where it's going to fit just right. Press down and take our pencil and make a mark there and there. And we're going to get it close to where it needs to be to match the top of this and then after it sits in and dries we're going to mask it off and use a scraper to bring it down to match the edges of the split. All right through my expert almost set up here I've got the splints in and I can get my high glue brush right where I need it and notice over here I've got some binding tape ready to go to hold our dicornia splint in place because this hide glue takes a while to dry and I certainly don't want to rush it. I've got some metal work to do while this is doing its thing. And I cut it a little bit longer than I needed to. Notice that that end is beveled because the cut is beveled. And this extends past the body of the guitar. So 
I don't need to get all high glued up, but here we go. We're just going to slip it in the groove like that and run it up to the end right there. Binding tape is good stuff. Go along as we do here. Pushing down. Notice that there's wood sticking up, which we'll take off with a scraper. This is all going to be under something that some of you go, oh, what did he do? But it'll play in the end. And I had a comment this morning on one of my sites that it's kind of sad what happens with these guitars, but I guess the other option is a fireplace if I don't kick out the 70 bucks it took to save it. There we go. Alrighty then, we have dried glue. How exciting is that? Let's see what kind of a mess we have to work with now. And see if everything dried up to the point where we can cover up the crack here and make this thing playable again. All right, nothing's cutting loose. There we go. Got a little bit of high glue wants to stick there. There we go. Now we just take off our The winch line here and then we should be able to pull the wire the guitar wire out and leave the cleat there we go easy money these cleats will become important when we decide what we're going to do to cover this up but let's get to work on leveling out here where we put the dicarina wood right there we need to level this out and get it smooth okay we're going to take this soft scraper here and close to the edge here where the glue is and try to get as much of that cleaned off as possible like so and we're going to mask this off again and give us a little bit of the width of a tape to protect what's left of the top of this thing. Alright, I like these round scrapers because you can vary the area you're working on really easy and we're starting to get to where we're scraping the edge of the tape off. I got this 1500 grit sandpaper and I'm going along now and just making sure everything is nice and smooth. There we go. Now I'm not going to leave that like that. I'm going to cover it up with something that's going to look terrible. So terrible you're going to like it. Okay, I'm going to measure from about right up here to that loud truck going by. And I got about nine and a half inches or 140 millimeters. Um, and I want to remember that I've got a cleat uh, right here. I've got another one about here, here, and here that I can attach to that stick out past the edge of the crack. 
So I'm going to cut something that's triangular shape to come up here like so to cover this up and to stabilize it for the next 82 years. So last thing before I cover up this wood is I want to put a little boiled linseed oil on everything right here. And let it soak in so everything doesn't dry out any more than it needs to. Um, you want to remember be careful with these rags, don't leave them laying around. They will self-combust. There we go. Get that wood treated up a little bit. Now the magic ingredient. What is one of the most beautiful things in the world? That's right, Marvel Mystery Oil. That's right. If you do, do not know about Marvel Mystery Oil, I don't know what to tell you. So. We've got a piece of an old Marvel Mystery Oil can here. We have prepared it. We've cut it out. We've smoothed the edges. We've put holes in it. We've made it match this. Now, we're going to put this on here with some Chick Flick Teal screws, which is a trademark of one of my failed repairs. And let me show you what it looks like. Right, there we go. This side is done. Put a little boiled linseed oil on it and get all these marks and stuff out of it. Boy, ain't that pretty for 82 years old. I ain't seen plastic surgery like that on something this old since, well, never mind, I was in Beverly Hills last week, so we'll just forget about that one. Anyway, we're going to flip this over and do the other side and I will catch up with you and say na na little na na here in a little bit. All right guys, wasn't that exciting? Almost as exciting as this 82 year old fur ball that you find inside these old arch tops. Some people save these. I don't know what's in there. I'm not sure I want to know. I survived COVID so whatever. Anyway, here it is. The patch on the front patch on the back. Um, I think it turned out pretty nice. I've done guitars like this before and people seem to enjoy them depending on what their taste is. Um, you know that little trick I use with that winch to pull the string up and fix the crack and stabilize the level of crack from the inside? I did an episode called 10 String Crack Hack. I'll give you a link to it right up there. Anyway, we got into a world of stuff that I don't think Orville Gibson figured we'd have to do when he was cranking out guitars in the early days. Anyway, 82-year-old guitar turned out pretty good looking, I think. And the, the main part here is we fixed that bulge that was here and one here. Uh, which means the tail block was actually twisting. And if your tail block isn't right... Your tail piece isn't going to be right. Your strings aren't going to be solid. This thing will pop off. And so we got the cracks fixed. We put some cleats in, got them stabilized. And I don't have to worry about this body now. So now we can get back on figuring out how to get this neck tilted forward just a little bit so we can get another piece under there like that. Get some height on this and get a floating bridge on here and some big strings. And I think we're gonna put a P90 on this thing and some volume controls and it'll be a screamer. Um, another $70 guitar kept out of the fireplace and I swear one tin can at a time, I'm keeping the landfills empty and I am literally single-handedly saving the environment. And if you believe that, well, then you need to subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. Hey, guys, I'll see you next time. Keep your eye open for this one along the way.